Here we go. So now it turns out that potentially the objects that have been shot down over the past few days, the smaller objects, not the massive Chinese spy balloon, but the ones that were the size of a small car, could be balloons again. However, I think there's some nuances here that we should dive into. So stay to the very end of the video because I'll give you my thoughts on what is actually going on and why there's some gray area where we still don't know exactly what these things are, including the fact that they might be the shape of a cylinder. So a lot of interesting things that we're gonna cover in this video, so definitely stay to the very end because at the end I'll give my thoughts on where I think we'll go from here and how I think we can defeat whatever this happens to be, some sort of a spy network, et cetera. I'm glad you're here, let's dive in. So Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, has come out and said that these were most likely balloons. And when I'm reading the exact things that he said, he says, they believe they were balloons, yes, but much smaller than the first one. So they believe, they think, you know, there's obviously some gray area here and there's some room for nuance, but I do think it's interesting that Schumer is the one coming out and saying it, and the president's kind of staying hush-hush for now, and I think that just says that, hey, there's some interesting things that happened that maybe, you know, we're gonna wait a little bit and see how things play out before the president actually makes comments himself. So why are we just now finding these things, and are there more of them? Well, Schumer actually went on to say in a statement that until a few months ago, we didn't know of these balloons. Our intelligence and our military didn't know. Come on, guys, come on. <laughs> we should probably have known about these things, but hey, at the end of the day, at least we know now at least how to detect these larger balloons and then these smaller car-sized balloons. But it begs the question of, hey, are there more of these things out there? And China still claims that the balloon that was shot down, which is the only verified origin balloon, the other ones haven't been verified of where they're from, but that massive balloon that went down over the coast of South Carolina that traversed our entire country, China is still adamant that that was not espionage. They were not spying on anyone. It was actually a party balloon. So <laughs> at least China's sticking by their guns, but it's kind of funny. And it's worth noting that China has sent balloons like this around the entire globe. And I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg now with the balloons that we've actually been able to detect. I mean, who knows how many other balloons are out there in other nations that haven't been able to be detected. So we might be unraveling a massive spy network in the depths of which we might just be finding out. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out as other nations start to do what the United States is doing, potentially beefing up our ability to detect these things. So what is China's reaction? Well, Schumer has gone on to say that I think the Chinese were humiliated, I think the Chinese were caught lying, and I think it's a real step back for them. In China, losing face is a big deal. It's a high context culture where you read between the lines and honor is extremely important. So yeah, there is definitely a side of this that might embarrass China. However, the, there's a part of me that's like, wait, they had to have known that at least that first massive spy balloon was gonna get shot down. And to me, that was kind of maybe a deceptive tactic of like, hey, look, that was an accident. Focus on that, look at that. We're gonna kind of bring some other stuff in over the coast of Alaska, over Canada. And maybe those smaller balloons or cylinders or objects, whatever they were, didn't come in as fast as they thought they would. They thought that we'd be focused on that larger balloon as they came in. As it turns out, the timing was we shot down the big balloon and then we detected the smaller balloons. So who knows what they were trying to do, but I kind of have a hard time imagining that they're thinking that we would not have detected these things. But I guess there's a chance that at the end of the day, the emperor had no clothes on and no one was brave enough to tell him that he was naked and that all his balloons were gonna get shot down and he was gonna be humiliated. <laughs> And in this case, obviously, the emperor would be Xi, the president of China. So the most recent incident came on Saturday, February 11th, when an F-22 shot down an object flying at 40,000 feet over the Yukon Territory. It's worth noting that this object actually started over the United States and it was tracked starting late Friday night, February 10th, and then it finally made its way over into the Yukon Territory where it was determined and decided to be taken down by President Trudeau or 
King Trudeau, I'm not sure what we're calling him these days, Prime Minister Trudeau, <laughs> and President Biden, they decided to take this thing down. Now, it's, there's a recovery effort underway, but it's worth noting that this is going to be an extremely difficult recovery effort because of how cold it is out there, especially this time of year, and just the access to the Yukon Territory is extremely limited. This is actually very similar to the recovery effort that's going to be going on near Dead Horse, Alaska for that first balloon or cylinder or object or hoon party balloon, whatever it was that was shot down. It's going to be very difficult to get to these things, but I think it's interesting and it's good that a lot of the world leaders that are involved are saying, hey, it's super important that we get to these things to find the origin and figure out if this is just the unraveling, just the pulling of a string of a larger spy network that's going to be unraveled. And Trudeau actually went on to say, we have to do everything necessary to protect the integrity of our territory in North America. So good on him for that. And then stepping back to Friday, February 10th, prior to the Canada shoot down, the Alaskan object that was shot down is extremely interesting to me because there's been some unverified reports, again, just unverified, that this object actually interfered with civilian aviation. Now, how it interfered, a lot of different ways that that could happen. The first way, obviously, is it flying in the airspace where commercial airliners fly, which is routinely, as you most likely know, between 30 to 40,000 feet. So this thing was predicted to be at 40,000 feet or reported to be at 40,000 feet. So that would obviously be a conflict if an airliner was flying pretty high to save fuel, whatever the case may be. So that would be a good reason to take this thing down. But there's also some unverified reports that this interfered with onboard sensors of aircraft. I don't know the exact details of that, whether that's commercial aircraft, military aircraft, with commercial aircraft, that would obviously be a big factor if something was interfering with your ability to navigate or something like that. And that would tell me that this thing has some sort of an onboard jammer or electronic warfare equipment, which just ups the game and makes this a really serious issue. And it takes it from a spy network to something more nefarious, something more offensive, which could be a real slippery slope. And the Canadian Defense Minister, Anita Anand, described the Canadian object as being cylindrical. And if that's similar to what the Alaska object was, then we're dealing with a cylindrical object up there as well. Now, I don't know the exact aerodynamics of a cylindrical balloon, but I do know that it's going to be way different than that massive balloon that was shot down. The way that this thing maneuvers through the air, especially up at 40,000 feet, being a cylinder, just tells me that there's some interesting technology involved. But hey, for all I know, maybe there's been cylindrical balloons for all of time. I mean, clowns have twisted these things into funny animals for thousands of years. <laughs> but I'm thinking that this might be something different if it's the size of a car. Who knows what kind of equipment you can get into these things. There's a lot of things that we don't know. So I think it's interesting to dive into the fact that it's a cylinder, but it's pretty cool. This is the first time that NORAD, so North American Aerospace Defense, has been able to shoot down an object that presented a threat to the North American territory. So there's been a lot of different intercepts, but I think it's definitely cool that NORAD has worked together with the United States and Canada to just up our game when it comes to protecting our airspace. And this is probably something that needed to happen for a long time. So it's good that they poked the eagle and we responded with, hey, don't poke the eagle, we'll poke you back. And with both of these objects, reports have been released that these were tracked for a while, which is smart because then you can characterize the size of it the intentions of it, and just kind of get more information from it. So it's not one of those, oh, balloon, shoot first, ask questions later. It's, hey, what kind of information can we get from this? And if you watch a previous video I did on how you would shoot down a drone or an object that's non-maneuvering, you can see that I'm just sitting there behind it waiting, just waiting for the perfect opportunity to shoot this thing down once I've gotten a lot of the characteristics, once I've studied it, and just kind of tried to figure out what this thing is. All right, so you made it to the bonus information at the end of the video. I'm a man of my word. So what do I think is happening and where do we go from here? Well, I think we're definitely pulling the string and unraveling some sort of massive surveillance network. And potentially instead of using satellites going with the highest tech, China is kind of going to the lower tech. So this could be just the tip of the iceberg when we find that China's got, you know, a range of different sizes of balloons from that massive one that we saw shot down to now these smaller car size objects to ones that may be even smaller. And this might be crazy, but what if they're able to disguise some of these espionage vehicles as other things? 
So, <laughs> I mean, this is wild, but I remember on the Thunderbirds flying and doing site surveys and seeing big groupings of like party balloons, like but a lot of them, like 10, 20, 30 flying together. And it's like, oh, those are just party balloons. Avoid them. But who knows? You know, when I, when I think it comes to espionage, nothing is off the table for China. And you can bet that they're going to deny this to the very end. So it'll just be up to us to maintain our vigilance and make sure that we continue to detect these things and beef up North American airspace. And that's actually started to happen. So President Biden actually put a lot of pressure on Prime Minister Trudeau to beef up the Arctic detection capability of NORAD and just the ability to detect threats from China, Russia, or anyone else. So I think it's great that that's happening. I think that's a good way for us to defend against this. But I think we're going to see more of these balloons. I think we're going to see different shapes and sizes or whatever they are, right? They might not be the balloons, the cylinders, the Chipotle burrito sized objects that are flying through our airspace. So let me know what you think below. I'm so glad you guys were here. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another video. I do one on what if this thing was a drone? What if this thing was a Tic Tac UFO? So check those out as they pop up. It mean a lot to me. Thanks so much for being here. Most of all, have a great day.